Welcome to the Daily Reminder Network. Heart Softeners by Sheikh Mu'iz Bukhari. My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters, and the viewers of the Daily Reminder Network, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وقرة أعيننا محمد بن عبد الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم أما بعد All praise and thanks be to Almighty Allah سبحانه وتعالى who is our creator, sustainer, nourisher, protector and curer We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to shower his choicest of blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon Prophet Jesus, Isa alayhi salatu wa salam, Moses, Musa alayhi salatu wa salam, Abraham, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, and all the prophets until our father Adam alayhi salatu wa salam. Inshallah ta'ala, for tonight's heart softener, we will be touching on husnul dhan, otherwise translated as Optimism, Allahu Akbar. If we only knew the secrets of positivity, positive thinking and optimism, our lives would be so much more brighter and our lives would be so much more beautiful, inshaAllah ta'ala. You see, the Arabs of Jahiliyyah, of the days of ignorance, they used to believe a lot in superstitions and they used to take many things as evil omens. They used to take many things. Say, for example, an Arab, if he were to, this is from the days of Jahiliya, if he were to set out on a business trip or any other trip for that matter, if he were to set out, embark on his journey, and the minute he steps out of his house, if he were to see a particular bird flying in a particular direction, he used to think of that or consider that as an evil omen and even at times cancel his journey. Allahu Akbar. And you won't believe it, I mean, this is from the days of Jahiliya, but sadly, we even have it today amongst our people too. There are many of us, illa man rahim Allah, who consider particular numbers as evil. They consider many things as evil. They, they throw salt over their shoulders at times to avoid misfortune. They consider numbers as evil. Say even when uh, perhaps obtaining an address for a, a, a house or obtaining a vehicle registration number, they consider numbers to play a part in their decree. They try to calculate and they avoid particular numbers saying that if we get this particular number, say number 13 or number 8, Oh, number four, these are unlucky numbers that those numbers will have an evil effect on our lives perhaps or on the vehicle that we are going to buy. Allahu Akbar. These are all from Jahiliya. These are all from the days of ignorance. Islam came about and abolished all of that. Allahu Akbar. That is known as tatayyur, to have superstitious beliefs and to take or consider some things as evil omens, numbers, days, or uh, objects, maybe the sounds of animals. Such things have been abolished by Islam, and Islam brought about something known as attafa'ul, and that is optimism. Allahu Akbar. You see, optimism is to look at every single aspect of your lives in a, on, a, on a brighter perspective to see good in your lives completely. Whilst on the other hand, pessimism is to look at things from a bad angle or to always expect something evil or doom, gloom. Allahu Akbar, these are the things. If a person is a pessimist, he's always thinking negative. And those negative thoughts affect his life because hadith is in Bukhari and Muslim. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu states that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said that Allah the Almighty is saying, Allahu Akbar, this is a hadith qudsi. This is a hadith qudsi as we all know. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states something and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reports that, it is considered as a hadith qudsi. Allah the Almighty states, Ana inda dhanni abdi bi. Allahu Akbar. 
I am according to what my slave thinks of me. If you think good of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah the Almighty will deal with you in a very good manner. If you think bad or something uh, perhaps that Allah the Almighty might punish me, if you think along those lines, then inevitably Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to deal with you in that fashion in, and, and in that manner. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the greatest optimist. And I will prove that by mentioning a few incidents and narrations from the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But before I go further, just to show you all the difference between an optimist and a pessimist, I wish to narrate a story, a story which has a moral to it. There was once a father who had twin sons, two boys, twins, and they were well, they were alike in looks, they were exactly the same in terms of looks, but in terms of likes, in terms of what they used to do, they used to be the exact opposite. Say, for example, if one of them loved sweets, the other would not like sweets at all. He would not fancy sweets at all. If one felt hot, the other would feel cold. This was how they used to be. And likewise, one was an optimist and the other was a pessimist. So. The father, one day, just to test them, you see, they were both born on the same day, he thought of surprising them. So what he did was, the, uh, the, the pessimist, who was a pessimist, who used to look at things negative, he filled that boy's room with toys. Allahu Akbar. He filled that boy, boy's room with toys. Okay, let's look at it in a context of Islam and Muslims. Let's say it was Eid. It was Eid, not the birthday, it was Eid. And for Eid, he filled their, that boy's room with toys, who was a pessimist who used to think in a negative manner. He filled his room with toys, all kinds of toys. But he, that boy used to think in a negative way. Whilst the optimist, that boy who used to think in a positive way, the father filled his room with the dung of horse, with the dung of horses. He filled the whole room with the dung of horses. Now he waited for some time and he went to the room of the pessimist, the boy who used to think in a negative way. And he saw the boy sitting in the middle of all of those toys that he gifted him and he was crying away. He was crying. So the father asked him, oh my son, you know, you've got all these toys with you. Why are you crying? So then he says, well, you know, dad, I, I'm worried now. If, I, if, I, if my friends get to know of this, they'll come and they'll break my toys. And then I'm worried about the batteries. The batteries might run out. I, I'm worried if, to open up the toys because the toys might break. You know, he kept on nagging, 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 all kinds of negative things. So the father listened to all what he had to say and then understood why he's crying. He went to the positive boy's room now, the optimist's room. And there when he went, he saw the young boy beaming away, smiling, and he's got a, a shovel from somewhere, and he's digging away at the, at the, at the dung of the horse. So uh, the father asked him, oh my son, what, you know, the, the room is full of uh, filth, and the room is full of the dung of horses. Why are you so happy, and what, what is making you so happy? So that boy, the optimist, who looks at everything on a, from a positive angle, he says, Dad, you know, with all of this dung around here, there has to be a pony somewhere. There has to be a horse somewhere, and I'm searching for that horse. Allahu Akbar. You see, this is the difference between a pessimist and an optimist. An optimist is a positive person who looks at things very positively, resulting in his life being very bright and very happy. On the other hand, a pessimist is a person who looks at things always from the negative side. So his life is always dark, gloomy, full of depression. Now coming to the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, many incidents. I'll just run through them very swiftly. Number one, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he travels to Ta'if, Allahu Akbar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had almost called out to around 25 tribes of Arabs to come to Islam and, and not two of them, not three of them, not four of them, all 25 of them rejected the message of that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam brought. But that did not deter the determination of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was an optimist and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was determined that he will not 
waver in this mission of his. He travels to Ta'if now to call the people of Ta'if. They used to live on a particular mountain. And we know the story. Rasulullah goes to Ta'if. They did not receive him properly. Leave alone receiving him properly. They chased him out of Ta'if and they had the hooligans and the street urchins throw stones at our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, resulting in him bleeding Allahu Akbar and even his blessed shoes were clogged with blood Allahu Akbar. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. At this time, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stops to take rest at a particular location right in the middle of Ta'if and Makkah. Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Ya Rasulullah, the angel who is in charge of the mountains is waiting for your command, for your signal to bring the mountains crashing down and destroy the people of Ta'if. What do you say, Ya Rasulullah? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the great optimist. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, at that point, you know what he said? He did not encourage that particular idea that Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam brought. Rather, he said, no, let them be because there is a possibility. Look at the positive outlook of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. There is a possibility that down the line, down their generations, there will be people who will accept Allah and accept me as the messenger of Allah. And scholars state, many brothers and sisters in Islam, in books of history, that even the message of Islam coming to Sri Lanka, to our country, was from an individual who came from Ta'if, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. If Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had commanded the angel to destroy the people of Ta'if, down the line generations would not have, they would not have remained to embrace Islam. But Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who always had a positive approach towards things, he took the positive stance, resulting in blessings upon this Ummah, Allahu Akbar. Look at the next instance. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his beloved companion, Abu Bakr radiallahu an. You know of the incident where they take refuge, they take refuge in the cave, Ghar Thawr, in the cave Thawr, they take refuge, the Quraysh, the Kuffar, the army, they are hunting for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They hunt so much to the extent that they come by the entrance of the cave. By the entrance of the cave, Abu Bakr radiallahu an is terrified and tears come to his eyes. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asks him, Ya Abu Bakr, what is worrying you? What is worrying you? Abu Bakr radiallahu an who says, Ya Rasulullah, the enemies are just here. If they look down, they will see us. It's not one big bunker that they were hiding in. It was a tiny cave. If the kuffar were to look down, they would see us, Ya Rasulullah. And you know what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said at that time? لا تحزن إن الله معنا. Do not worry. Indeed, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is with us. Do not worry. Allah Akbar. Look at the optimistic approach of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Likewise, there was once an individual who went to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said, "Ya Rasulullah, I have been afflicted with fever." Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "لا بأس تهور إن شاء الله." Don't worry, it's just a means of purification. You will be cured, insha'Allah. But then that person said, No, this is a fever from hell. This is a fever from hell. I, am, I have sinned so much, so this is a punishment upon me, and this will be the cause of my death. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam very calmly said, If you say so, then it will be so. Allahu Akbar. And scholars state that it was not even a month, and that person passed away. So it is how we think, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. If we think positively, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring about things in a very beautiful way. But on the other hand, if we have a negative approach to our life, then negative things are bound to happen in our lives. So let us think very positively. The more positive we think, the more good things, bright things, happy things will occur in our lives. And we will not be subject to depression. We will not be subject to sadness. There is another instance of an optimist falling off a hundred story building. An optimist who was falling off a hundred story building. And the people on the fifth, 50th floor, they heard him, while, this is a story with a moral, whilst he was falling down, they heard him saying, you know what, so far so good. So far, 
so good. He's falling from the 100th floor, by the 50th floor, so far so good. So even if you are facing trials, calamities, difficulties, know for a fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all powerful over all things and He is the best planner. And remember, His divine decree is what will overpower every single thing because the pens have been lifted and the pages have dried. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of our sins and may He the Almighty accept our good deeds and may He help us to make the best out of this month of Ramadan as if it is our last month of Ramadan and may He unite us in the gardens of Jannah just as how He united us here tonight with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa akhir da'wa yani alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen jazakumullahu khair. Donate now. Go to www.thedailyreminder.org slash donate and stay updated by joining our network's social links.